Talents versus, and let's get serious. Yeah! Talents and rotations! Alliance! You must become champions. You must do more damage. More dots! You know, you need to increase your number. And oh my goodness, it's not working out for you. You've tried everything. You looked everywhere you'd normally look, and it's not working. Well, guess what? In this video, I'm going to give you what you need. I'm going to quickly, quickly, that's right, quickly equip you with the resources so that you have the same information that top players have. This will mean the ball is in your court. You'll be able to know that you're doing the right thing for the current patch. First of all, open up CurseForge. We're going to go in and we're going to type in Trufy GCD on the Browse tab. If you don't have CurseForge, get the desktop application. So you get add-ons into World of Warcraft. Install Trufy GCD. And install details. Details damage meter. There it is, right? Get it? Ta-da! Now minimize. Next, we're going to go on to now and show you the best, in my opinion, website for setting yourself up with everything. Everything. Maybe not in life, but in World of Warcraft, okay? Go on to you.gg. And you will have a GG. No doubt about it. See, have a name. You. GG, GG means good game. You GG, you good game, come to this website, right? It starts with League of Legends. Now, we don't play League of Legends, okay? We play a championship level game. We play World of Warcraft. We are heroes, no doubt about it. So go on to World of Warcraft and you will see classes and specs. Click on your spec. For today, I'm not going to be a champion of the lights. I'm going to be a Frost Mage. Just to give you some differentiation, okay? Frosty Mage, click Frost Mage. Now, here, you can see, you can see pretty much everything. First of all, go on to Mythic Plus. Click that, make sure it's ticked. If it's white, it's ticked. You can choose the dungeon specifically for this. And if you were doing raiding, for example, you can choose Heroic, Mythic, and you can choose the bosses. It's a very good website with all the information you need in one place. That is gearing. You choose a gear. And the best thing about this website is it's based off of passes. What are passes? Well, it's this way that top players record their gameplay, right? They record their gameplay via the combat log and they create a pass. They submit that to our website and this website, u.gg, then goes to that website and takes the information and presents to you the most popular choices by top players, aka via their passes. So this is how we're going to get the best information on everything, literally everything, apart from rotation, okay? So first of all, go on to talents, go on to mythic plus, and then go on to drop down list affixes fortified. You'll need two sets of talents, especially if you're playing with me. Don't turn up for a fortified weekly talents from Tyrannical. Uh, it's not a good idea. You will have no fun. <laughs> Simple as that, really. You want to do big AOE cranks and uh, make sure you've got different ones. So fortified is when the trash is harder and Tyrannical is when the bosses are harder. So you'll have single target for Tyrannical and you'll have AOE fortified more or less. So get fortified for the purpose of this video and go on to it then press Copy. You'll have copied the talents then. GG. You've got them on your paste, ready to be pasted. Okay. Next, I'm going to show you where to get your um, information about, like, let's just say, for example, a top player. Imagine if you went in there, you got these talents, and you look at these talents, you really, really disagreed. Okay. They were doing something really not quite right, and you had a friend that was a streamer, or you knew a top streamer that was doing things different to what it said on u.gg. Well, I'm going to show you how to look up top streamers, because if u.gg didn't exist, or if you didn't know it existed like I didn't until recently, you used to have to do it like this. So I'm going to show you the old way. Go on to Raid.io, go on to Mythic Plus, go on to Spec Leaderboards. Here you can go on to Mage, you can then go on to Frost, and you will see the top scoring Frost Mage is across the world. You can scroll down then as well until you find one with a stream. And a streamer has like a little red dot. You see that? And that means you can click on them and watch their stream if you want to. But you can click on any of these and check their gears just like we're about to. We'll click on this one for practice. And um, you can see his spec. You can see his full build. You can see every piece of gear he's got. If you scroll down, you can see his score, how many times he's done a 25, how many times he's done a 20, or how many times he's done a 15. You can see his previous dungeons, what he's recently done, or she, sorry, or she. And um, we have got the composition of the group that they played in, right? And you can see all the talents of those people too. You can even click on one of them if you want and go, hey, you know what? He's, he's playing with a warrior. How did that go? What kind of warrior is he? Let's click on him. Before you know it, you're on their profile. You can check them out too. This is the most important resource for checking people out. Raider.io when it comes to PvE. And um, 
you should use this wisely. You should look for a streamer if you're struggling to know for sure. But I can promise you most of the time, u.gg is the best place for talents, right? And it's up to date. Probably won't encounter that problem. But it's also handy to have a streamer that you know of your own spec and to find one, Radar.io is a very good site. Next, I'd like to go into, right, what are we gonna do next? We are gonna go into the game. Log into the game. Get in there. Crank it up. We're going in. And uh, whilst we're doing that, if you're clever like me, you can do two things at once. Go onto your browser and go on to and type in oh, Wowhead. Wowhead and put in your class like Wowhead for, for this uh, experiment, Frost Mage Rotation. So if you're a paladin of the light, a champion, a true champion, put in maybe Retri Paladin Rotation Wowhead and you'll get this thing. Make sure it's the right patch for whatever we're looking at now. Maybe you're looking at them in the future. Make sure it's the correct patch. Clickety clock, you're in. And here we go. Scroll down. Don't be blown away. That's the first task I, I say to you. You know, don't pop all cooldowns and run away scared. It's only a website. It's only writing. All right. Log into your character. Back onto the browser. This is the information you need. Do respect this information. All your things like talents and everything else comes on u.gg. But the one thing u.gg u.gg very easy for me to say u.gg needs is rotation. Okay, the rotation wowhead is king. It's the king of rotation. Most of the time it's correct. No hell no. Every time for me it's been correct. Okay, so go in here. Maybe there's an exception. That's all I'm saying. Be forgiving. There is an advanced breakdown of pretty much every single thing they rationalize here, even for multiple target rotation, single target, etc. For the purpose of this, you know, I recommend you just go ahead and read all of it. And this is what I recommend anyone that wants to get good at their class does learn it all. But for the for this video, I'd say just go on to the opener. Look at the opener, get it there. That's what we're going to try to achieve. So we're going to start with a frost bolt, then a flurry, then a nice event, then a comet storm, right? That's what we would do. So get yourself in game, log across. Here we go. Fly through this beautiful dragony city, the Val Draken. Here we go. For the alliance, in we go. I'll show you how the dummies are working. Dummy one, he's a snake. Um, and he doesn't hit you. Dummy 2, he's a tank boss. If you go into him and he's a dummy, he will hit you and it will hurt if you get close. If you're a tank and you want to practice, like I said, this video is for healers, tanks, and everybody. There's a PvP dummy. If you're a PvP player, you can use him, but he gets low and he stays low. Here's the AoE dummies for rotation on a, like an AoE pack in a dungeon, all right? So, next. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Try to put it to work. So try to do the rotation that it says. I'm going to swap my ability around there so I can try to do it. My rotation here for Frostmate should be Frostbolt, Flurry, Icy Veins, Common Storm, and then Ice Lance. Breaking into two chunks. The first chunk, I'm going to show you how to do it. Just like that. All right, here we go. Dragging across the screen. So it should be a Frostbolt. If I can remember what the key is for that, that'd be great. Frostbolt. And then I'm going to go Flurry. Bang. And then after that, I'm going to go straight into Icy Veins. No matter how slow I go. And as you can see, because we downloaded this add-on, you've got the, the things coming up. Look at that. Bloody hell, mate. That's good. Then we're going to Common Storm. Bang. Crank it in. And then after that, we go on to an Ice Lance. Easy as that. So I've just done a very slow rotation on this dummy. Now, as you do it, you can see some buffs have appeared. As you play and do this, your normal rotation, perhaps you already are doing more or less the right thing that it says on Wowhead. Maybe you're pretty close to what it says. But respect what it says and do exactly the order that it suggests, right? Do that. But whilst you do it, have a quick go and just have a go anyway and look at your buffs as they occur. Do you know what that buff is? Overflowing energy. Do you know what all of your buffs are? If there's a buff on here that you don't know what it is, open up your talents tree. For example, this buff here, maybe you don't know what that is. Encanter's flow. How does it occur? Knowing what it is, is one thing. Another thing you can do is know how it occurs. Often it's in the talent tree as to where the buff lives and uh, where it will come from. And often it's in the spell book. So make sure that you know where all your buffs come from, why? Well, so you can maximize them, to max, to take advantage of them to the full, to do as much of a good performance as possible. Okay, so this is the Encanter's flow here. And how it works is it builds up over time and it diminishes over time in combat. So we're not in combat and it's not up, all right? So over time it diminishes in combat. So if we start fighting again now, there it is. Two stacks, three stacks, builds up, builds up, and it's going to diminish over time. There you go. Look, four stacks. It's diminishing. What's this one? B bone chilling. Oh, well, you know what? Tomoshi says, I don't need to know all these, to be honest. Nah, I've got a trinket that's got a proc as well. I don't even know. need to know what that is. Nah, it's no good. I'll just do bad damage. Not a good player, man. That's it. 
Don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. Don't be like that. Get in there, read the buffs, read the spell book, okay? Read the talents. Find out where them buffs come from. Okay, that should have hammered that into you. Next, we're going to talk about an important thing now called ability knowledge. Ability knowledge is key. That's what this rotation is. The rotation is based on ability knowledge. Somebody who knows more than us probably has made this and is giving us that information for free, the best order. How has he found that order out? Well, he's used his spell book, he's opened his spell book, or she has used her spell book, and has read through all the spells and made sure they know what they do. You may have played this game a long time ago, but maybe Frostbolt's changed. That might sound stupid to you. Frostbolt's changed. It's just a bolt of frost. How could it possibly change? It could do anything. It could be completely, it could have a different little buff that comes in the buff right now. So I strongly suggest you go through your spell book and you check every single son of a gun in this spell book in case they're trying to sneak one on you and make it so you can't play well. Okay? So read them all. Read them. Read! Keep going through every, go right to the back. You'll find passives at the back as well that you might even not know exists. There's a buff on my buff rack here. It's a perfect example called Overflow Energy. We just saw that. I'm going to crank one in now. You'll see it's going to proc. No crit. And this occurs. I think that's if I remember correctly. So let's read it. What does it do? One's up. Let's try and get another one. Yeah, two stacks. How's that coming? What's got, you don't know that? You need to know. So let's read it. Your spell's critical strike damage is increased by 10% flat. Yep, banked. When the uh, when the directs when your directs damage spells fail to critical strike a target, your spell strike critical strike chance is increased by two percent. So when I don't get a crit, I get that buff. Good to know. Good to know. Why wouldn't you want to know? Get the information. Don't be overwhelmed. Get the crank. Get the crank. So that's that part done. We're now going to go on to so that's ability knowledge. It's absolutely key. I recommend you follow the wellhead rotation. But knowing why is in the spell book by reading the abilities. Even if you think you know, maybe you don't. Have a read. Maybe it's changed. Next, we're going on to... We're going on to resources. Yeah, so resources. So our mage has mana. In this spell book, for ability knowledge, it's good to know what the ability does, but it's better to know how much it costs in resources. So as a mage, for example, I have two charges of flurry, and I need to know that. I can't use Glacial Spike until I've got enough icicles. And if I don't know where icicles come from, I need to find out. So I look in the book. It's all in the book. Icicles. Ta-da! It's there, right? So understanding how your class works is all in the spell book, but try to figure out which abilities give you a resource. It might be Holy Power, might be Rage, and which abilities cost you that resource. So when you're smashing your keys, you understand, hold on a minute, if I use that ability, that's going to lose me all my icicles. Because that might be quite important if you're in the middle of a fight, and you want to know that, right? So understand which abilities in your ability book cost resources, and which ones gain you resources. Because that could get you to do more damage. Knowledge is power. Listen to Cadgar. Okay, so... Next on the list, I'd like you to get your details ready. Now, you know what? Next on the list, I would say, in your own time, train up. How you train up is up to you. Get that rotation, get the opener down, then hell, you know what? Scroll down, try to get the priority. Look into it, read it, make some bullet points, make four or five things that you need to remember. Little things about your buffs and your procs that you need to remember. So you can go into a dungeon and practice those things to maximize. Read it all, take it all in. You don't need to uh, worry about the amount of information. That's a good thing. To get, you're getting all the information, right? Wowhead's great for that. That's why I recommend it. So, going to a dungeon, don't sit there on a dummy. I recommend not sitting there on a dummy once you've got the basics. Get the basics on the dummy, practice up, and then get into a dungeon. Go on to the LFG. Go ahead and look for a plus five. I run a leveling guild. We've got loads of people who want people for plus fives. No one wants to do them because they're too high cranks. That's the fact. So get in there. They're going to appreciate you, even if you've got low damage. They just want to get their group started, right? I mean, can you even find a plus five? I don't know. Maybe not. Make a low group, all right? Maybe join that nine, right? That's how I would be. I try hard, get the rotation, and practice. But before you do, well, I recommend, this is massive, massive, that you learn to track your performance. How are you going to track it? Well, you can see right now, I've got two details windows because I've installed... Uh, details. You probably got that damn juicy GCD in the middle of the screen. Real quick, I'm going to show you how to stop that. Go on to escape, go on to options, go on to add-ons, go on to truth, truth for GCD. All these are going to be ticked. You don't want any of them ticked, to be honest. If you want to tick them in the future, that's up to you. 
I recommend just sticking the player and making it to 40 size of the icon and then press show. What this add-on does, it tracks the global that you do. Global for global. So you're going to be able to see your last 10 globals, for example, or in this case, eight. Excuse me. And uh, tick, untick combat only, okay? Make sure you've got scrolling on icons ticked. You must have that ticked. That's how you make it look like I've got it. Press show slash hide anchors. Show. And then you can move this if you've got Blizz Move. If you've not got that, check out my interface guide. Another video, okay? And that was another add-on I recommended in there. And um, you can move this black box, and where this goes is to determine where the, uh, the things go, the buttons go. See that? If you cancel a cast, it crosses it out as well. It's fairly clever. I recommend you put it beneath your character, to be honest with you. Not right beneath so you can't see the fire, but somewhere that's out of the way, perhaps even there, right? That's what I recommend. Keep it out of the way, and uh, you could even put it to the top of the screen. It's fine. As long as you can look at it, it's fine. Have it whilst you play, um, and you can then track, for example, and press hide when you don't hide the anchor, and it will stay still. It can't be moved, as you can see. When you play, you can then go, right, Frostbolt, for example. Frostbolt, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Comet Storm, and then Flurry. Maybe the order's wrong, right? Maybe that's the order wrong. I don't know. If I don't know, I'll check my rotation. Okay, but you should go in there knowing the rotation. So this means then, because you've obviously gone in there knowing the rotation, you can use this as a tool to look back. If you hover over it, it stops it, right? To look back and see your order. So in the middle of a dungeon, whilst you play, even as you play, you can casually look down at a glance and see if you did actually put them in the correct order. So first bit is knowing it. Second bit is tracking it, okay? And then using that information to increase the performance. So the first part is true to DCD. The second part is details. Press the cog on your one details window or if you've got if your own profile, whatever. By default, this is how it looks, but it won't have two windows, okay? So you'll have to create a window. So for the purpose of this video, I may as well just quickly delete this window. Give me one second. Window body and delete number two. Crank. That's how you delete it. So you know for future reference, you'll probably need to reload. So yeah, um, you're going to make a new window here. So we're going to press the settings. Go on to display tab. Go on to create window. Crank. Now press cross. You've got the new window. Drag it over. Drag it too close. It might start doing all this crazy shit with numbers and balls. Make sure if you drop it, you know how to get it undropped because they're stuck together. And that's annoying. I didn't know how to do that, actually. You press this little lock. Press it. Crank. And they're unlocked. It's like a little lock. Okay. I didn't know that for years. Poor. Drove me mad. I wanted to try and get them in place. Anyway, so we've got these now. Two damage meters. Right click. Make sure this one's on damage. Right click to change the function with details. If you don't know this already, you can track pretty much everything. Right click is how you change it. You right click the top. You don't right click the man. If you right click the man, it's a bit annoying. It goes underneath. Right click the title. Okay. Goes the top. So that one's damaged, that one's damaged. Make sure they're both damaged. Damage done, crank. Then go on to the little page. You've got a little page. See, it's, it's blank. It's not got a cross on it. Page to cross on it. If you hover over that, don't click it, hover over it. Then scroll up and go reset all data. Now you've reset all the data from the beginning of time, uh, at least since you've logged in, right? You want this one to be the one at the bottom to be overall. So click overall. Hover over the little page with no cross. Now this one will track the fight current fights, and this one will track the overall. Aha! Now this is where you're going to be a winner, okay? Because when you go into a dungeon, now you can see on this particular pull, I've done this much damage. On this particular pull, as you can see, I got 2740k overall. What a crank! Now you can see that as you enter a dungeon, you're going to be able to see how well you're doing pack for pack, pull for pull. Okay, so you can then, when the pull finishes, it goes and it ends up in the overall. See that? So every time the packs, you finish the pack, it's going to go into this one and then it's going to end up in here and add to the overall total. You're going to be able to see then how far overall you are behind other people overall and if you're beating them on that individual pack. So you might be like, oh man, he's on my tail. You might crank him big time in this pack. Get a massive number, maybe 700k. You know, the guy's got 500, and you're like, ah, ha, ha, I'm going to beat you now, mate. And now you're ahead of the guy on the overall, okay? So, vitally important to have two damage meters. Or if you're a healer, you simply right click, you change to healing done. You simply right click, you change to healing done. But unfortunately, in a dungeon, it's just you. So you won't be able to compete with somebody unless you're going to compete with the tank. I do that sometimes, can be a good laugh. But yeah, you can track in exactly the same way as a healer. You see from the pack how much you've healed, and then from the overall end of the dungeon, what's my overall result at the end of the dungeon, okay? But what you can't do yet, if you didn't know this already, is break it down. So I'll show you how to do that. 
Details is insane. It's insanely good. So if we go on to this and we go again, I'm going to fight now and pop some cooldowns. You do the same. Great, 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 great. Here we go. We're going in. Going in. Going in. Okay. Lots of buffs. Look at all these buffs. Do you know what these buffs do? If you don't, hover over them. Make sure you do, Marine. Make sure you do. I want a single buff that you don't know. Okay. Great, 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 great. Now, stop combat. Stop. And look at your damage done on the current segment for that pack. And give it a left click on yourself. You can do this for other people too. And it gives you the breakdown, right? You can see what did the most damage. In this situation, it was Glacial Spike. You can see Ice Lance next. Then the Water Elemental. Then blah, 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 all the way down. You can then see on the right hand side how many times they cast each individual spell. So say for example you got to the end of a dungeon and somebody's beating you and they're playing the same class as you. You can see. You can be like, okay, that guy cast way more glacial spikes than me. No wonder he beat me. Son of a gun. Okay? That's the way you go about it. Auras. This is a thing. Not many people know this, man. I didn't even know so recently. Now, in here, you can see your uptime of buffs. Wow! Big, big difference. You go to a dungeon as a frost mage. Another frost mage goes in there too. Stroll in, you know. You go in there every pull. Icy veins. You're cranking up every single pull as many times as possible. There ain't never no numbers ticking away on your icy veins. You are always, always, always using it as fast as possible. And you're keeping it on cooldown. You never see the icon. There's always some kind of number on it, right? That's what you want to be, right? You want to be using Icy Veins as often as possible to get a high uptime. You see mine says 100%, so it's not really a great representation. But if you look at Bone Chilling, look, Bone Chilling was 85%. So Bone Chilling, do you know what that was? Oh god, I'm sorry, I don't even know what that is. We're going to find out, one second. Bone Chilling, spell damage done, increase. But where does it occur? Oh, I don't know. So let's look in the spell book. There it is, it's there. Whenever you attempt to chill a, a, a chiller target, you gain bone chilling. So ideally, I'd have bone chilling up all game. I've got to keep them more chilled out. Got to keep them chilled. Got to keep them slow. Maybe I'm not doing enough frost bolts. Does Glacial Spike do a chill effect? I don't know. These are all things you can find from the spell book by reading the spells. And by reading the talents. Right? So that's what you want to do. You want to learn to break down your uptime and your buffs. You want to learn to look at the end of the, f the dungeon and go, look, I've done 80k overall. It's really good. Here's why. I've got my spells in the right order. Oh, look. Let's have a quick look at my uptime. Oh, dear. Looks like I didn't have enough usage of Icy Veins. You've got 47% uptime on Icy Veins. Not very good, really. Could have done better this dungeon. Oh, well. I'll try to use it more frequently. Because that's how it works in dungeons. If you didn't know that already, on Fortified especially, you want to be using your big offensive cooldowns, one minute cooldown, a two minute cooldown. You want to make the most of them. You want to use them every one minute if you can. If it's a good worth, you know, if the mat, if the pop, pack's nearly dead, probably don't pop a two minute cooldown. But have it ready for the next pack. Heck yeah. Use it as often as you can, as many times as you can. And that's how you get more overall damage. Okay. So, um... Real quick, before we finish the video, thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you found this helpful. Don't be this intimidated. All the information you need to become a great player is in the game. It's just not very presentable in the game, which is why I've made this video, to make sure that you are feeling confident and can do really well. Now, breaking it down real quick, there's four aspects, right? Maybe five. Not very good at counting. Math is my weakness. Here we go. We're going to go for uh, a quick breakdown. Well, number one, go onto the websites and... You want to find out what your talents are, whack them in. U.GG. Number two, get your rotation and make sure you look at it and respect what it says. Make sure you follow it to a T. Okay, number three, go into the game and train. Okay, that's the thing, right? But you won't want to train and then just stop at that. Train and check. Number four, check. Check you know all your buffs. Do you know the procs? Do you know the passive effects? Do you know all this stuff? Do you know what you need to know? Why it's happening? Why it's going right? Why it's going wrong? Number five, analyze the performance of your play. Get to the end of the dungeon, check your overall, check what you're doing. You got good uptime everywhere. You got the right abilities coming up on the top of the damage done, but top of the healing done. If you got all that right, 
then GG Alliance. You are a champ. Congratulations. All right, thanks for watching the video then. Hopefully that was a very helpful video that's going to get you ready to be a champ. No doubt about it. You got all the information you need and you will be able to succeed. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, don't forget to give comments and give me feedback. I need the feedback. And I need some likes and some subscriptions. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. If you're coming into my stream and rallying me up for the Alliance, then thank you very much. Appreciate that too. We'll see you in the next one. Remember, good prevails.